Welcome back, 0K fans, to the tiebreak match for the 0K March 1v1 2019 tournament. We are in a match between Pet Turtle playing spiders and Izzeride playing spiders because we're playing on Ravage and Ravage is good for spiders. Also, I'll talk about it later. People over subbing to the Twitch channel. I wanted to say thank you. Thanks, Camzak. Those of you watching on YouTube, yeah, no, it sounds a little weird. Possibly a little bit awkward, but. Yep. Anyway, please coming in from both sides, scouting out a little bit here and there just to poke out, figure out where people are designed to set up. Looks like Pet Turtle setting a little bit more for you know, sneaky bits. Getting that flea there. It's like, hey, where's the flea? There's the flea. Flea's gonna just wreck you. You're not careful. Flea's gonna mess you up. I mean, it's really a good idea. Just setting up units like that to try to gauge whether or not expansions are being taken. I don't know if that's in position to actually see anything, though. No, it isn't. No, that this flea can't see anything. But yeah, when you have that, you can see when your opponent is expanding, because it is likely Izzeride will expand over to the west here. Pet Turtle, on the other hand, not really going for any scouting. They're going much more for aggression. These fleas are entirely being used for attacks. This is... This is a bit of a problem. I mean, not that much of a problem. The Lotus is already built up, so Pet Turtle was prepared. But... It's actually kind of a problem for Izzeride. Why are they building entirely fleas? I know flea spam was a meme for a while, but it's not that useful anymore. It was useful for a while, though. Like, don't get me wrong. It was actually a legit strategy. It's just... Yeah, there are counters. Like, lotuses, redbacks. Fleas themselves got nerfed. In particular, they can't easily ambush things. Which is kind of funny, because that was kind of the point. But yeah, their attack radius is larger than the decloak radius, so it's harder to ambush stuff with fleas. Not impossible, just harder. Ah, and good. Pet Turtle has set up their fleas so that they actually can see what's going on. They can see if something has been done, so this expansion has been scouted. I like that. Good job, Pet Turtle. I, overall, I like the fact that Pet Turtle is playing this kind of safe. They're getting their expansions up. They're getting they're getting an idea of where is a ride is, so they know what's going on. The only thing I am not so sure about is whether or not this setup for Pet Turtle is actually going to be something they can build off from. Izzeride is expanding re reasonably quickly. Oh, never mind. Actually, yes. Yes, I might be able to... Oh, no, this flea's not going to kill anything. The Lotus will be up more in time. Eh, well, at least the flea managed to hurt a thing. Not kill a thing. Two fleas would have been great. If That's maybe a thing Petrol should have done. I don't know. Put two fleas instead of one. Now, it did slow things down. Izzeride's expansion was slowed as a result, so that gives Petrol a slight economic advantage. Still good play. Of course, the question is what happens when these fleas start really getting used up. Because the fleas, yeah, they're doing their thing. It's okay. But sooner or later, that's not really going to work. That's kind of what I'm wondering, is what exactly is going to happen with these fleas as things continue? Because if the fleas... As the fleas get attacked and get destroyed and everything starts to kind of fall apart for the fleas, like sooner or later, you got to deal with that fact. And, well, it's... It means Izzeride has a change of their forced composition, which they kind of are, switching over to redbacks. Pet Turtle already kind of switched over to redbacks, but a little bit in fits and starts. Switching over to Recluse, though, that's perfect. Pet Turtle, I'd say, is ahead as far as unit composition goes. Izzeride a little bit ahead in terms of economy, though, having taken a lot of the center and possibly taken more of the center. Pet Turtle is aware of some of that, but not aware of the exact center being taken. Is aware that the Eastern Center has not been taken, and that could be taken by a Weaver, but I don't see any Weavers taking the actual trek to do that. So Pet Turtle right now, kind of in a tight spot as far... Well, not tight spot. They're kind of in a slightly tougher spot as far as economy goes. They don't know K spot as far as army goes. They are definitely playing ahead. They, like, they know what's going on. They know their opponent's going to go for the red backs. Thus, they go for the recluses. Good play. I like that. So, I do... I am confident Pet Turtle is going to be able to build up the right things at the right time. I'm just not sure how well Pet Turtle is going to be able to actually make that pan out overall. So, I think what might end up happening is that Pet Turtle starts building up a bunch of Recluses and Redbacks, and then at some point there's a fight, and then some of the Redbacks die, and then the Recluses get swarmed by fleas. Just judging by the last game, Pet Turtle... They tend to be caught in... They tend to play to a particular build, a particular infinite build, and then they just stick with that forever. And I'm not sure I totally agree with that. I think that that's not a bad idea. I just don't think it's the best idea. I think it's one of those things that it will bite you eventually. And you gotta be careful about that. At the same time, Izzeride coming in here. Oh, are they gonna get rid of Petrol's Commander? It's four redbacks. 
have to contend with the Lotus, but that is four Redbacks. Pet Turtles Commander, I would say, as a jump commander, it's probably going to be able to get out of there. Should be fine, but it's still going to be tricky. At the same time, there's that Redback. I said, there's Red Blue, Red Clues. Getting rid of the Redbacks, pushing things back, giving Pet Turtle a bit more room to breathe. And now the map has been split in half. It's right being a bit more aggressive on the north side, though. Actually, about these little smaller expansions, but with the recluses coming in, I don't see that being a thing that's going to last long. But again, recluses is coming in. We're getting into reckless wars. The question for me is, who's going to switch off first? And I think it's going to be Izzeride. I think Izzeride is playing a much more flexible game. I mean, they're playing a game they actually have to keep going back to the factory to build more units on, but they are making sure that they are keeping their army relatively, relatively agile. Petrol, on the other hand, is relying entirely on infinite builds, so I don't see that working out in the slightest long term. And we saw in the last game, that didn't work out especially well. It was okay, but not especially great. In this game, I just expect it's going to fall apart. I mean, the Redbacks are already kind of in an iffy spot. The Recluses for Pet Turtle are already having a bit of a tough time staying in. I mean, whoever goes to Fleas first or even Hermits first is going to have an easier time. I get a few Hermits that just punch through everything. So, that makes sense to me. But, at the same time, Israel is... Well, they can't... Remaining idle here. There's a reclaim they could be grabbing. Not much, but some. Or building up defenses, or building up their... I mean, okay. It's more that Israel is actually expanding quite a bit to the north, which is pretty handy. Pet Turtle did some threatening over to the south, which... Okay, did some damage. Has slowed down Israel's expansion a bit. But Israel's still ahead by 7 metal per second. Like, this is what it has to come down to, is... Getting rid of this stuff down here, which is almost impossible. The, sting the stinger is being built up to do that. And this one is in it's not in range. It's not really going to help with anything. Even the metal extractor here is not going to be affected too much by it. So that is not going to help. Stinger here is also not really going to help. Overall, this is Pet Turtle again in a situation where they can't really take the game. But Izzeride, unlike Kingston in the last game, is not in a position where they themselves can't win. So Pet Turtle... They're going to have to find some way of punching through this. I'd say... Oh, crap. There you go. Get the crap. And it looks like Pet Turtle might have been a bit behind the curve there. 40 seconds for Izzeride. No, no. 20 seconds for Pet Turtle. They're actually doing fine. So Pet Turtle, at the very least, is going to be able to get the crab first. Should be able to free up the Northern Expansion. If that's done, then everything's an even split. And Pet Turtle can start to get an economic advantage for the first time in this game. Because as much as Pet Turtle did go for a good set of calls as far as the unit production goes, the unit composition, they just don't have as much money. And now at this point, Pet Turtle is a 10 metal per second spread. That kind of depends on overdrive. Pet Turtle's relying a ton on overdrive. As soon as the power starts to really come online, Pet Turtle's economy gets pretty even with Izzeride. Just because of all these wind generators dotting along the entire north side of the map. That's eight metal, no, seven metal extractors along the same chain of overdrive. Along with the ones over here that are also getting overdrive help. So at least Pet Turtle does have that to go for them. Anytime the wind comes up, they are coming out ahead. Problem is the wind doesn't always come up, and they can't rely on that if they're not even actually coming out ahead. They're coming out even. But now we have the crab coming here. Center of the map, there is still a bit of a skirmish going on with the recklesses trying from Izzeride trying to get into Pet Turtle's base. But on the north side of the map, Pet Turtle with the crab should actually start being able to get rid of these metal extractors. Get rid of these defenses. If it gets rid of the stinger, that will be enough for the follow- Well, that's follow-up weavers. I'm going to say it'll be enough for follow-up redbacks. We aren't seeing follow-up- Or recklesses, rather. We aren't seeing follow-up recklesses. We are just seeing the crab. That is all there is. There is only crab in the distant future. At the same time, the crab here, trying to get rid of the stingers. Actually, I'm having a hard time with two stingers, one of which is being very rapidly repaired. And that is probably going to be enough to... Okay, that stinger's down. Second stinger might... Yeah, we'll be able to kill it. Oh, never mind. Raven's coming in to try to deal with that. The Ravens do get rid of the stinger maybe in time? Yes, they get rid of it in time. No, they don't. The crab just barely goes down. The stinger actually didn't even go down in the process. 75 HP left. At the same time, over to the north side of the map, this, the crab sent in by Pet Turtle, able to start taking out Izzeride's base, take out the stinger. This can be easily followed up. Now, at the same time... Izzeride is not letting this go lying down. They do have a bunch of forces in case construction starts happening by Petrol inside of this base. They can get some of the red backs in, and Izzeride will be able to take that north side back. But they're also being threatened heavily by crabs right south of there, so Pet Turtle doing a fine job reclaiming this side of the map. 
Now, at the same time, that Hazmuth is right going for Air Switch, so Pet Turtle, now that they are, aren't dealing with the fact that their opponent's burning 800 metal on a factory and another 200, 350 metal on an air pad, they have to deal with... Like, Petrol has to deal with the fact that Izzeride has their money back. And... Can now actually send Ravens across the map and kill everything. I don't see any Razors. Or Hacksaws. Or... Well, the Tarantula's being built up, but... That's enough to kill the factory. Yep. Rip factory indeed. Factory goes down. That's a huge blow for Petrol. They do have enough units. They should be able to at least hold the line long enough to rebuild the factory. But that was huge. The tarantula was on the way. It wouldn't have been enough to save this, but it still was a lot. At this point, Izzeride, their commander is under some threat. If that goes down, it could be okay as a trade, but it's just such a tough call. Now, that being said, the chainsaw is being built up, so Pet Turtle should at least be able to hold things once that's up. Rebuild the factory, get things going again. Their economy is fine. Pet Turtle is actually doing great for energy, doing great for overdrive. That's been holding them in, despite the fact that they've been not as great on territory. But the question remains, how is Pet Turtle going to be able to get through this when all they have is a couple crabs? And a proxy spider factory. Actually, I guess they have to rebuild the factory. That's the thing. Right back coming in to get rid of some of the fleas. Fleas won't be able to easily get rid of the crab. The spider factory might get scouted, though. That is somewhat important. Not huge, though. The main thing is just going to be whether or not Izzeride is able to break through what's going on in... Again, Pet Turtle is kind of spending resources. They don't really have... Like, they don't have any units coming in. Izzeride can send in reinforcements. All these Ravens are here already. And as is, Phoenix is over on the north side of the map. Are already taking out as many wind generators as they can. Breaking up the overdrive lines. That will hurt Pet Turtle. But I don't think it'll hurt them enough at the moment. I mean, the main weakness for Pet Turtle right now is they have a lot of units up front. And not a lot of things protecting them. And the Ravens could do a lot of... Could do quite a bit of damage if the crabs aren't moving. On the other hand, Israel's commander coming in here. I don't think it'll have any problems. I mean, it's... Now I get rid of the mo Geo Plant. That'll help get rid of some more Pet Turtles energy. But we've seen already, Pet Turtle doesn't really do well at closing out games. Or keeping their commander alive, for that matter. Their commander does go down. The Chainsaw makes at least two of the Ravens regret having done that, but it's fine. That's a commander death on the front side of the map. Like, that is going to be enough to make it very difficult to hold this line. Like, holding the spider factory is going to be huge, because a frontline spider factory is risky. It's working out okay. The crowd's managing to get in and deal some damage, but it is super risky. If that factory gets assaulted, if any if any of the frontline falls for Pet Turtle, this factory's done, and Pet Turtle's just out of luck. We've already seen Pet Turtle does not seem to like building additional factories. They might just be tired. I think they were actually kind of tired coming in. But they weren't building any additional factories last game. I think they need to build an additional factory this game if they want to be able to get in to better position. And indeed, they are. Airplane plant coming in. They learned the lesson from the previous game. They built a second factory. Pet Turtle, with the second factory, should be able to actually get in this game. Build some Swifts, get rid of the Ravens. That's most of Izzeride's forces, actually, is with Ravens. And they've already been highly thinned out. They've been halved in the last fight. And again, the Crabs are another major asset, but you know, throw in a Thunderbird, and that's going to be no problem whatsoever. On top of that, get an Owl. See what's going on. I mean, really, Petrol has got a much better position to actually hold a strong air force because they have a great anti-air setup with that chainsaw right in the middle. They can just set up a few swifts to attack into the base and and then just throw in a few bombers. Thunderbird, Phoenix, Raven, doesn't really matter. Send in something and then that'll just do the trick. On top of the fact that they have units all around the map chipping away at Izzeride's economy, Petrol will actually finally getting a stat, or, well, with overdrive static economy that rivals Izzeride. Unfortunately for them, though, the number of crabs Izzeride has is considerably more impressive and putting Pet Turtle in a slightly tight spot. On top of all the fleas coming in here, I... Yeah, this is kind of... It's kind of tough. I mean, the crabs are doing a decent job, but again, weakness of Pet Turtle has often been mono factory reduction. All the fleas coming in here... No, I, I don't know why you're going for fleas here. Widows would make some sense if you had follow-up forces, but yeah, Pet Turtle doesn't really have follow-up forces. They have the air factory, but I don't see it building anything. They have the spider factory, but it's just feeding fleas into these crabs. I don't know. It just doesn't look like it's working to me. Obviously, it's not working. It's such a fleas going to their death. Yeah, that's... Needs an ulti. Yeah, that's actually the thing. That's the thing to bear in mind, which, again, I don't see Petrol ever doing, is building striders. I never see Petrol building striders. 
I'm not entirely sure why, but they just don't. I think it's been a huge weakness of theirs. I think if they built Striders, they you know they have the ultimatum that would help, and overall just able to work. But no, they've lost their main factory. The air factory is still alive, but it's not doing all that much. There's a few bombers here and there. That's not enough. That's really not enough. That will not hold things. So I don't know. I just really don't see anything Pet Turtle has up their sleeve. It's just gonna be a slow burn of the Israel coming in with all these crabs. Tearing apart everything, and I mean, you know, there's room for Thunderbirds, there's room for some more Ravens. I mean, as they move, like I said, crabs, as they're unarmored, can be intercepted. But that's about it. And the crab coming in here for Pet Turtle, trying to do what it can to deal with remaining reinforcement forces from Ezeride. But, no, as soon as it has to move, it dies, and as soon as it, or, well, yeah, as soon as it's dead, that's, that's kind of it. There's no more ground force coming in for Pet Turtle. They have bombers and nothing else. All Ezeride has to do is make a couple tarantulas, or just make a few swifts. Which is exactly what they're doing. Make a few swifts. Make a few swifts, win the game. That'll just do it. If Pet Turtle loses their Air Force, they will have nothing to work with. If they still have it, then these crabs will gradually be destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> chat pointing out in the game. The fast spider factor is not the best option. Yeah, I'd kind of think in this case. What crabs? Redbacks as well. I'm not sure what I would go for in this case. Oh. Okay, the suggestion being light vehicles. Yeah. Rovers, I could see. I mean, Dominatrix would be a thing, of course. And then... Yeah, the Impalers wouldn't be bad. I was kind of thinking, like, maybe you could make something work with... Maybe tanks? No, I don't know if tanks would work. Jump bots, maybe? Place all those moderators, that kind of thing, get rid of the crabs. Moderators would actually be pretty effective, I would think. But nope, just spiders. All spiders, all day. Nizaride, what are you doing to deal with this? Because I feel like this is going to be a lesson in how to deal with a late game. And how to deal with a point where your opponent's kind of entrenched, but you could build something. Some kind of defense, some kind of artillery. Not just run units in, as we saw Petrol do in the previous game. Hmm. Well, Izzeride is still doing okay for economy. Have reasonable factory spread. It's just, what are they going to do beyond that? Yeah, flea spam coming in, that is a thing. That is a notable thing. But it's like, is it going to make a difference? I don't know. I think flea spam, it's, we've seen it already. We've seen it doesn't really work. And at this point, the, uh, there's, there's, there's the Air Force going around, killing everything. Or rather, the Air Force going down. Is right able to wipe out the entire Air Force, get Pet Turtle out of the sky, and I don't think there's anything... Not, Pet Turtle hasn't really got much else to work with. The Flea Spam is going to try to come in and deal some damage. And the South Side actually is at threat. The Stinger's not going to reload quickly enough to deal with the Fleas, so this is a viable option to get rid of some of Izzeride's expansion. And Pet Turtle still is a fairly strong economy, but they've been running over and over with the same unit. It's just... It's not really working because of the lack of units. That's the hugest problem. How you deal with a number of units is the most important thing. And there's... Oh, there's the shot coming in there. Crab coming in. Hermit's trying to deal with it, and I don't see that happening. I mean, I like the idea. Just, you know, it can punch in, get past a lot of the stuff your opponent's doing. It's not a bad way of getting through an opponent's force, but Izzeride just has a much larger army. There's no way through it. And the thing is, most of the crabs Izzeride has is, aren't here. Oh, no, there. Never mind. All the crabs are here. The rest of them died. My bad. But still, that one crab is doing enough work. It doesn't even matter. I don't see anything Petrol has. They're basically just living off overdrive and reclaim, and they realize that that is it. Izzeride takes third place as Petrol just decides, you know what, as... That's done. It's over. And we see army value is actually up to the mid-game. Pet Turtle was pretty even, and after that, it just fell off. Metal used, metal produced. Metal produced is about even. Metal used was not. Metal excess. Oh, boy. People in Twitch chat were talking about this. Yeah, you can you can see it. You can really see it in the grass. You can see where the army value starts to drop is where metal excess starts happening. And that was when the factory was destroyed. That was the reason why that happened. Like, Pet Turtle lost their factory. They couldn't build anything. 
and they didn't have anything up to make up for that. Didn't have a second factory, because Petrodal doesn't seem to like to build second factories very much. Yeah. Hey. Mirrored Wang in the chat saying, Firewalker versus Spider. I said jump butts. They said jump butts. I feel pretty good about that. Well, at any rate, that was that. That was the tournament. That was That's it. So it's not reflected in the standings, I don't think, because this was a tiebreaker. But yeah, Manu12, congratulations. You have won the March 2019 1v1 tournament. Fall and Wesley, good job in second place. Isaride, well done. The tiebreaker grind to third place. And thank you, everyone else, for joining and participating in the tournament. It's great to have you here. So that is going to be it, as I mentioned. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And again, thanks to the Camzac for subscribing. Not sure what to do about that. Side note, I don't really have stuff set up for stream, like the standard Streamlab setup, because, I mean, first off, I think it's kind of tacky. But also, because these videos are going on YouTube, I don't like having it look like a Twitch stream on YouTube, even though I do bring up the Twitch stream and do talk to Twitch stream chat. And that's fine. I, don't, I have no problem with that. It's just that I kind of like to make it look like YouTube, unless there was some way of doing some kind of thing that doesn't get into OBS, like it's just Twitch on its own doing it, and so I know that thing has happened, but it's not showing up in the final feed, so I can put it on YouTube with my own internal, like the recording that I have off OBS, put that on YouTube and not worry about it. If that's a thing, then maybe, but otherwise, no. Anyway, yeah, so, other than that little bit of housekeeping, Again, thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, Akinem, for organizing. Thank you, all the players, for playing. Sorry, Catley, I didn't actually get to cast any of your games. I'll see if I can find a replay of yours from... Actually, maybe from the tournament. To cast two weeks from now. I won't be here next week, by the way. I'm a bit busy for the next week. Just FYI. And otherwise, that is going to be it for me. So, thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.